Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and we are continuing on with our Airbnb renovation. This week we are here in the bedroom. So thanks everyone for commenting down below in last week's video. If you missed that, we completed the sunroom. So now we're moving on to the bedroom because the kitchen is finished, the sunroom is finished, and we've basically just got two more areas. Well, technically three because the hallway area also has to get done. So this is gonna be part one of the bedroom makeover. I'm so excited. We are gonna be focusing on this wall. I have some really, really big and awesome plans for this wall. It's gonna be an accent wall. Let me show you what I've got in mind. So for this wall over here, we are gonna be tying in the blue color that I have throughout every single room in the Airbnb. And so that's gonna be a very big statement piece, but that's not all that I am going to do on this wall. I also want to make it into an accent wall by putting some different designs with wood MDF. And so right now what I'm gonna be doing is designing that and then just really planning out what pieces I need to go grab from the hardware store so that we have got the exact amount and, and the, just the design laid out here on the wall. This is my first time ever doing an accent wall. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly the steps that I am taking so that hopefully I can inspire you guys to just do an accent wall if you're um, interested in doing that for your own area because you know sometimes a room all it needs is just a little bit of a pop maybe you know you're uh, renting a house or something like that and maybe you can't do too much drastic changes but even an accent wall like this I can show you how it can be really rental friendly because at the end of the day, all you have to do is take it down. So if you're willing to put in that little extra work, then this video is for you. I am excited, so let's get started. Some of the things I'm gonna be using, the step stool, because it's a pretty tall wall. Then I've also got a pencil, a measuring tape, and then a level. And I suggest maybe doing a longer level, that way you can trace some longer lines as well. But like I said, I'm gonna be first drawing out my design plan. And I will pop a picture up right here of kind of my, um, I guess, inspiration photo from Angela Rose Home. I really like how this one is not super um, symmetrical and it's got some slanted lines as well. So there's tons of different designs out there, you guys. If you don't like this particular one, it doesn't mean that an accent wall isn't for you. You can really make them however you want them to look. So I'm planning on using about an inch to two inch MDF board, so that's on the skinnier side, but I think that it'll give this wall just enough of that little oomph to really make it all come together. So first I'm gonna be just kind of laying out some designs. So stick with me here and let's do it. So for my room, I have this trim board piece that I had taken off previously just so that we could do some drywall repairs and things like that. So I wanna put this back in here. I'm not gonna do it yet, but I'm gonna at least place it so that way I know um, that my trim or my pieces that I'm going to put on the wall can then just kind of sit right on top of that trim piece. I'm gonna be keeping the trim in here brown as well as like all of the window trim, doors, closet, everything like that. So this, is just gonna be right here. And I just want a little bit of a guide down there um, so that, again, I can really design my piece. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna start with a large piece that's almost gonna go across the entire wall, but it's gonna kinda go slanted. And then I'll kind of be building the rest of the pieces off of that first slanted piece. I don't really want it to come from corner to corner because I just feel like that's 
like almost too uh, X-y. I don't really want an X. So um, I'm thinking of kind of putting it maybe more up here and then bringing it down to that wall. Again, not all the way to the corner. Um, but I think that something along this line will be really good because it's kind of in the middle and then I'll be able to get some smaller shapes up here as well as some larger shapes down here. And then this is also gonna be acting as my headboard. So that's uh, an important factor to remember as well. So I'm almost thinking I'm just gonna draw the lines on the wall for where I sort of am thinking I want these to go. Okay, so first line finished. And again, I'm just starting to start building my sort of pattern off of this line. I wanna have some closer together over here and then some like farther apart in different areas. And we're just gonna keep on keeping on. Far, we've got two lines going across diagonal and then two going upward. So I think I'm good on the longer diagonal lines here. And now what I wanna do is just start adding in some more smaller lines. I know it's kind of difficult to see those pencil marks, but I'm just really doing this so that I can get a gist of my design and then so that I know how many feet of the MDF boards that I'm gonna need to go grab from Home Depot. So that's why I think it's important to go ahead and lay out your design. Hard to see a little bit, but we've got the main design all laid out. This is subject to change, but we've got a pretty good start going on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my tape measure here and we're going to measure all of the boards that I will be attaching to the wall. And that way I know exactly how long I need um, and how many pieces I need, and that's um, because I don't wanna overbuy. Now, I definitely will buy more than I measure for just because of different angled cuts and things like that, but for the most part, this will give me a really good idea of how much uh, material I actually need to grab at the store. So my math comes out to about 61 feet, and then I have accumulated or accounted for about 20% waste or extra and so that is another 12 feet so we're gonna go with right around 73 to 75 feet of the MDF trim um, I do think that I will try and get the longest pieces possible um, because that way they will fit across like the whole wall when needed. And I'm pretty sure it'll be like by the square or by the linear foot. Usually that's how the MDF works. And again, I'll be getting the one by two. So let's go ahead and head over to Home Depot and get some trim. Alrighty, we're back from Home Depot. It's the next day, so it's time to start getting these guys cut. I ended up actually going with the one by three, but it's technically a little bit um, thinner than a three inch. It's around two and a half inch. And I did that just because when I was looking at the one by twos, they're more of like a one by one and a half, and that was just a little too skinny in my opinion. And I think that these are gonna be absolutely a perfect size. They're actually right around the same size as the level so they should fit right inside of the lines that I made yesterday so that's perfect I ended up getting 12 8 foot ones and I know that's more than I like measured for and even after accumulating for more but I'd rather have more and not have to go back it costs right around $100 for all of this and the caulking so really not too bad 
um, there. Then I also grabbed a digital angle. So I'm gonna be able to use this in order to get the exact angles on the parts that I need to make the cuts for the boards. It's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error, I think, to begin with, just because I've never used this angle type of thing before. And it can be really difficult to get the cuts, but I thought that this would make it as easy as possible. So we're gonna get started measuring some angles. So I've got my angle and then I'm just gonna open it up I want to start with the long boards. So we're going to start with this one first. It's the longest one. And I'm just going to put it right up against there. It looks like it's right at 42 degrees. And I want it to go right across like that. So I'm going to transfer that angle to here so that I know what exactly, which part I want to cut off. So I want to be cutting off this side of the board so that it will then fit right up there. And then once we get this one measured, we'll be able to put it up and see how much more of the board that we need um, for the next board that we can cut and then figure out what that angle is down there. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's not right, is it? <laughs> Dang it. This is why I bought extra, because I knew. So that's definitely a different angle, so that's good. Let's go check and see if it's the right angle. Dun, dun, dun. That's better. Right? It's not perfect, but it's there. Yes, I'll take it, honestly. Just caulk it up there or leave it? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to be filling in all of the like cracks where they meet and everything like that. So putting a little bit more caulk and or, and, or spackling in there is not gonna be too much of the extra work. So with that being said, I think I'm gonna grab my brad nailer and go ahead and get this baby nailed in. All right. So it's important to try and at least find a couple of studs on each piece, especially if you're not gonna be using something like liquid nails to glue it to the wall. I chose not to use liquid nails um, just because in case anyone ever wants to take the accent wall part down, it's gonna be a lot easier and it's not gonna give them like a mess where they have to basically redo the whole entire drywall section. So I marked down here where the studs are from, I didn't have a stud finder, but I just based it off of where the nails were put in previously with the trim board, the baseboard here. So that way I know exactly where the studs were. It made sense because they were right about two feet apart, which is what studs are supposed to be. So now that I've got this one on, I like to just went like this and it's not wiggling one bit. And then again, later we'll go through and fill in all of the nail holes. You do wanna make sure that you're countersinking your nail holes, just there's settings on your nail gun if you have one, um, that'll allow it to go deeper than the actual surface. So it's not flush, but it's just a little bit sunk in. That way you can fill it in later. Let's keep making some cuts. The wall is definitely uneven. I feel like sometimes it like bows in a little bit, so it's kind of weird. Um, but we'll fix all that with the caulking. You won't be able to tell, but it is kind of weird that it's not like pressed up against it all the way up, but it is like most of the way up, if that makes sense. Weird. So although this is a compound miter saw and is able to you know, change angles and different things like that, it can't quite make the cut that I am trying to make, which is about a 30 degree angled cut for some of the placements of the board. So what I've done is I took my digital angle and I'm, I'm so glad I just got this. It was like $40 at Ace Hardware, super worth it. 
because it's allowing me to draw out my angle that I need. So got 30 degrees. I just lay it down on the straight side, draw my angle out, and then go ahead and line, oops, line this up as well as I can. Make it into the 30 degree angle and then I just basically take the saw, don't click it to go yet, but I'm just kind of, I'm eyeballing where this should be placed. And then I can sort of like roll it across, maybe, to like make sure that I am there in the correct spot all the way down. So a little bit more of a little tedious process, but again, couldn't do it without this digital angle. So if you're doing this in a little bit more intricate design than I, or like I am, other than just like some 90 degree angles, then definitely recommend grabbing yourself one of those. Save the hardest one for last. I had to do two angled cuts on the same board, but we got it done and the wall is complete. Oh wait, I actually forgot I have to put that one in. Remember? Oh, oh. I put that one in. Oh, this one, I guess I cut it a little bit off, but I decided that since it fits just going down a tad tiny bit, that that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place it here instead of where the original line was. Um, it's just like around an inch down here, but it's still um, straight all the way up to the top there. So I felt more and more confident throughout the whole entire process. Like once I got those first couple of cuts done and it was working out like I envisioned it to, then I was just like, okay, I got this. And like, I just kept going and going and going, cutting, 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 nailing, nailing, nailing. It was really nice to have the miter saw up here with us. Although it was in the other room, it was still, it beat going all the way downstairs. So if you can have your miter saw in, like even if we could have it in the same room, that would have been sweet as well. Uh, but dust will kind of get all over, so keep that in mind as well. Next up is time to go ahead and spackle all these holes. So that's gonna be a fun job. And then also we're gonna be caulking all of the seams, if you will. So that way it will be a very seamless look and you won't be able to, there will be no gaps between any of the wall and the trim pieces. So it almost looked like it was like there from the very beginning, like it's not some DIY project. So in order to make this process go a little faster, it is a lot easier with two people. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone and Neiman is gonna go with the DAP wood filler spackling and just fill in all the nail holes as well as the cracks between boards. So like when they meet, that's where he'll fill. And then we'll go back and sand that later once it dries. And then I'm gonna go through with my caulk gun and get all of the seams along the wall. Now that we've got the holes filled and everything is caulked, it's time to let that dry. So we're gonna take a pause here with the project and that's gonna be the end of this video. But be sure and get subscribed down below because next week I'm gonna be finishing this wall and then hopefully also finishing the rest of the room minus the floor, of course, because all of that is gonna get done at once. I think I told you guys in the beginning of the video, but if I didn't, or even if I did, let me know down in the comments, what color do you think the wall's gonna be? I think it's gonna be a pretty easy guess if you've been following along with our Airbnb renovation. If you're not caught up all the way, the playlist will be linked down below. We'll see you guys back here for part two next week. See you on the flip side.